the end of every year, I always make a state of the collection video, but I thought it was a good idea to talk about the watches that almost made my collection, but for something or another, they didn't make it. So here we go. For starters, we have the Tudor Pelagos 39. This watch might just be the best diver in the industry. Perfect 39mm case, titanium body. Retail price of 4700 US dollars. This watch was just perfect. I sold it because I wanted to use that money to buy more stock for my store. But be assured that this watch will definitely find its way back to my collection. Then we have the Zenith Chronomaster Open Heart. A stunning watch and my first El Primero chronograph. I was in love with this watch. The only problem was its size. The 42mm case felt humongous, but everything else about this watch was perfect. If it was 38 or 39mm, it would have definitely still been my collection. But I ended selling it to a dear friend, which I know will take care of it and enjoy it just as I did. Number 3 is the Oris Pro Pilot GMT Limited Edition. This watch was an impulse buy. I was walking through a store and saw it in the showcase. It looked perfect. I was instantly in love with it, bought it, but 10 minutes after, immediately regretted buying it. I tried loving it, don't get me wrong, it's a great watch. I just couldn't find the perfect strap for it, so bye bye. Number 4 is the Tudor Black Bay Pro. This is the second time that this watch is in my collection. I traveled with it and I enjoyed it thoroughly because I actually used the GMT function on it. It is a great watch, 39mm, not that thick, basically a strap monster and a really comfortable bracelet. A perfect everyday watch. I loved it, but hey, someone offered good money. It might come back to the collection, maybe, I don't know. Number 5 is one of my favorites of this list and one that I actually regret selling. The IWC Pilot's Chronograph in green. IWC has an ability to make one of the best green dials in the industry. The glass back was amazing. The dial was stunning. Super comfortable strap monster. I really miss this watch, but yet again, someone offered good money. So, you know. Number 6 is the Seiko Presage Honeycomb. Seiko is known for its amazing dials and affordable prices. This watch was a special limited edition with a really stunning dial. I wasn't set on this watch staying in my collection. It was just a feeling of if it stays, it stays. I knew I wasn't going to wear it as much as my other watches. I just wanted to keep it because of its amazing dial. Yet again, it sold after one day of being up on the site, so yeah. If it comes back, I will probably keep it, but I'm not going to actively look for it. Number 7, the Breitling Cosmonaut, the first Swiss watch on space. This is a limited edition of 250 pieces worldwide with a gold bezel. Stunning watch full of history. There are a lot of reasons I sold this watch. 1. I never found the perfect strap for it. 2. Since the dial is configured in a 24 hour manner, it was kind of confusing to read. 3. I love this watch but maybe not in my collection, so next. Number 8 is the Jeje Le Cult Polaris Chronograph. A really expensive watch. No running seconds, but holy shit is this a good watch. I bought a bunch of 21mm straps and really enjoyed it. The case back was beyond watch porn. Someone just offered a lot of money, so you know. <laughs> Then we go to another Jeje Le Cult, the Reverso Dual Face, an amazing watch, strap monster, two-faced watch. I really had no reason to sell this, except a good deal. I ended up trading this watch for another Reverso and another watch, so it was a good deal. Number 10 is a brand I would never thought I would have loved so much, and that is Mont Blanc, with the Twin Fly Chronograph. The case back of this watch was pure watch porn with its in-house movement. I wish I was able to wear this watch backwards, just to see the movement every time. I also wish the case was smaller. It was 43mm, so way too big for me. If it was maybe 39 or 40mm, it would probably still be here. 
Number 11 is the only Tag Heuer on this list and it's the Tag Heuer Carrera Heritage. Astonishing silver dial with baby blue accents. Sold it, came back, sold it again, came back, sold it yet again and it still came back. I thought it was the destiny telling me that this watch has to be in my collection. Honestly, this watch is beautiful, comfortable. I'm just missing the perfect strap that matches the baby blue on the dial. Number 12 is an extremely rare watch, the Cartier Basculant. Had it twice, both sold in under 15 minutes after posting them on Instagram. They are beautiful, rare and amazing. Probably the next one I see is staying home with daddy. Number 13 is another Cartier, the Santos Large. On paper, this wasn't a watch that appealed to me, but when I had it something clicked and I loved this watch for a whole two days, just before someone offered a big chunk of cash. One thing that really turns me off about the Cartier Santos is a mirror polished bezel. My OCD doesn't let me have really bright watches with scratches on them. So next. Number 14 is Grand Seiko. Celebrating the 60th anniversary of the brand, this astonishing blue watch came to my hands. To be fair, the previous owner probably tied it up to his car and drove away because the finishing was horrible. Bumps, cracks, everything super scratched. I mean, one of the main features of the GS watch is the Suratsu finishing, but the previous owner didn't take care of it right. So it's time to move on. Besides, a good friend of mine kept it, so win-win. Number 15 is another Grand Seiko, the Elegance SPGW231. I loved this watch. I actually didn't want to sell it, but a really close friend made an offer. I already had the green version in mind, so I figured it was time to sell. The off-white dial was amazing, definitely a strap monster. The only off thing to me was the 19mm lug size. Number 16 is the Tudor Black Bay Panda. I love chronographs, especially the panda dialed ones. This watch is amazing. There is just something about it, having just two sub dials and not three that just threw me off. Number 17 is another really expensive watch. The Omega Seamaster World Timer. Easily the most beautiful dial of this list. The planet inside is just ludicrous. This is one of the watches that I had been longing for a long time, but when I got it, well, it was just too big. Don't get me wrong, this is an astonishing watch, mesmerizing dial, just some 2 or 3 millimeters big. Number 18 is a perfect green watch, the Oris Aquis Hulk in 41.5 millimeters. Perfect size, amazing green dial. This watch is definitely coming back to my collection. I sold it because I just had no money and I was hungry, so, you know. Number 19 is a watch that I had been after for almost two years. The Zenith El Primero Chronomaster Sport. I am not quite sure why I sold this watch. Maybe I wanted the white version instead of the black. The case back on this watch and the El Primero skeletonized movement is just pure craziness. If I get the chance, this watch is certainly coming back. Number 20 is a German watch, the Nomos Tangente. I have had this watch three times, three times, and all of those times it sold in less than 20 minutes. Maybe next time I'm keeping one. And last but not least, the Bulgari Octo, designed by Gerald Genta. This is a huge watch, I mean just huge. The case back and an in-house caliber is amazing. I also wish I could wear this watch the other way around. I sold it because the dial and crystal always seem to be dirty, full of dust particles and my OCD just couldn't. So as you can see, my collection changed at least 21 times this year. That's 1.75 times each month. If you are interested in my state of the collection video, stay tuned for it on December 31st. Cheers and Happy New Year.